In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to make a logarithmic range input. A regular HTML range input such as this one changes along a linear scale. If you use a regular HTML range input to control something like frequency or volume, you may notice that the desirable effects lie in one small part of the input's range, and that the rest of the range seems to all sound the same or very similar. This will happen with a lot of things in audio because of the way human perception of sound works. To make an input which works better for us in situations like this, we can use logarithms. I'm not going to explain exactly what logarithms are mathematically, but just know that a lot of things in audio work better when adjusted along a logarithmic scale. For example, we often measure loudness in decibels, which are logarithmic. Increasing a sound by 10 decibels means that it is now 10 times louder. Every time you go up by 1 decibel, the size of the increase in actual sound pressure is greater than the 1 decibel increase before. The increases are getting bigger and bigger, which is different from a linear scale where they would all be the same. But on a logarithmic scale, we are still not changing as drastically as we would on an exponential scale. Another example is most equalizers. In this image of a Logic Pro equalizer, we see that the higher frequencies towards the right are changing in large amounts, jumping by 5,000 or 10,000. Meanwhile, the lower frequencies to the left are changing in much smaller amounts, like 30, 50, 100. Again, this is all geared towards the way human perception of sound works. We still need to keep track of linear scale values to display the position of the input correctly, but we are going to also calculate logarithmic scale values based on those linear scale values. And the logarithmic scale values are what we will apply to audio effects like frequency filters and volume. Start by creating a new folder. Name it whatever you want. Open up a terminal in that folder. Use the command npx create react app period to create a new react app inside this folder. If it didn't work, make sure you have node npm and npx installed. Once that's done, open this folder up in VS Code or the editor of your choice. First, a little cleanup. Let's delete all the files and imports and code we don't need. Let's give our document a nice title. Make a components folder. Make a subfolder for logarithmic input stuff. Make a file named log.js. In here we will create a class that handles the scaling calculation logic. Its constructor will take a few options. Min post is the minimum position of the slider, which we will by default set to zero. Max post is the maximum position of the slider, which we will by default set to 100. Min val is going to be the minimum value on our logarithmic scale, by default set to log of one. Max val is going to be the maximum value on our logarithmic scale, by default set to log of 9,000. The scale is a ratio between the linear positions and the logarithmic values. Now write a method named value, which takes in a linear scale position as an argument. It will return a logarithmic scale value based on the linear position provided. Also write a method named position, which does the reverse takes a logarithmic scale value as an argument and returns the corresponding linear scale position. Make sure to export this class so we can import it elsewhere. Make a new file named logarithmicrange.js. This will return an input and import react in the use state hook as well as our log class. Create a use state hook to keep track of the linear position of the input.
Set that as the value for the input and also give it an onChange method named handleChange. Inside handle change, make a variable named new position. Give it the event target value as its value and set our position state with it. Now define some props with defaults. On change is a callback we run every time the input changes. Default value is the default position of the input. Min pause is the minimum position of the input. Max pos is the maximum position of the input. Minval is the minimum value in our logarithmic scale. And maxval is the maximum value in our logarithmic scale. Set default value as the default for position state. In handle change, check if on change exists. If not, show an error in the console requesting that prop. If onChange does exist, we continue past the return statement and create an object with the new position and value. We'll need a new function to calculate the logarithmic value based on the new position. Let's call it calculate value. Pass this object to the onChange callback. Let's make a new instance of our log class and just name it log. Let's pass in an object of options using the props this component takes. Now let's write that calculate value function which uses our log class instance to calculate and round the new logarithmic scale value based on the input position. Don't forget to set the input's type to range and its min to min posts and its max to max posts. Back in AppJS, let's import and render logarithmic range. And give it an onChange method which just console logs the value passed to the callback. Open up a new terminal and run npm start. Here we can see the linear position and logarithmic value logged to the console every time the input changes. Now stop the React Dev server and install RC Slider using npm. Create a new file named logarithmic slider.js. This will return a slider component imported from the RC Slider package. Give that slider a range prop and set its value to an array. Create two use state hooks to hold the positions in that array. I'm going to call them high position and low position. Give the slider an onChange method named handleChange. Before writing that, let's remember to import the CSS from RC slider. And the log class. Let's also define some props. These are the same as our other component, except we have two default positions for high and low instead of just one. Set the slider's max value to max posts and min value to min posts. Copy over the log instance and calculate value function from logarithmic range. Inside handle change, let's do the same check for an on change prop. Destructure the new positions from the array the slider passes to handle change. 
set our two use state hooks using those new positions. Now create an object with the new positions and values. Pass that object to the onChange callback. Back in AppJS, comment out logarithmic range. Import and render logarithmic slider instead. Pass it the handle change method as an onChange prop. Open up a terminal and run npm start. Now we can see the linear position and the corresponding logarithmic value of both the high and low slider. One weird behavior you may observe is that if we are moving the high position and trying to cross the low position, suddenly we are moving the low position instead, and vice versa. To prevent this, we can use the allow cross prop described here in the documentation on RC Slider's NPM page. Back in our code, let's set this prop to false. Now that behavior is gone. There are many other input packages you can apply this to. One that I think is very cool and fitting for audio projects is React Rotary Knob. React Dial Knob is also a good one. So again, the linear values are what you will use to keep track of the input's position. The corresponding logarithmic values are what you would use for various web audio settings, such as the frequency on a filter. If you want to be able to save presets and then later reapply them, you can either save both the positions and values, or you can save either the positions or the values and use the log class's position and value methods to convert one into the other. That way you can set the positions of your inputs as well as the values for your audio settings.